27th of February 2024, the federal government of Nigeria introduced the Expatriate Employment Levy, the EEL, a mandatory financial contribution imposed on employers to hire expatriate workers in Nigeria. The levy is fixed at 15,000 US dollars for directors and $10,000 uh, for other categories of the expatriates. It is payable annually. That's like and some of the objectives, of course, of the expatriate um, employment levy are to promote skill transfer and knowledge sharing, balance economic growth and social welfare, enhance collaboration between the public and the private sectors, and address demographic shifts. The expatriate employment levy, which is to be administered by the Nigerian Immigration Service, will be implemented from 5th, uh, 15th of March 2024. The federal government's 70% additional levy on expatriate employment has attracted outcry from some Nigerians or some quarters, let's say. But to discuss more on this expatriate employment levy on daybreak this morning, we have the Director General of Nigeria Employers uh, Consultative Association, the NECA, Mr. Adewale Smart Oyerin Day. Good morning and thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's good to have you. So he's joining us live uh, from Geneva, Switzerland. So, uh, uh, Mr. Adewale, let's talk about, uh, you know, this EEL, that uh, it's a new policy. Uh, why are you people pushing back? Why is the NECA pushing back, you know, this policy so hard? Thank you. Thank you once again. Um, for those that will do that, I just want to set in context to the conversation. Uh, NECA is a responsible, forward-looking organization, and we are, if you, if you allow me, probably at, at the forefront of, of national development, of skill development, of um, enterprise sustainability, and global integration, basically. So our role in contributing to national development in all contexts is um is basically unquestionable so while government have the prerogative to come up with policies and programs to meet certain objectives it's also important to say that those policies and programs normally we have consequences on different stakeholders and the expectation is that yeah those stakeholders will have been uh, will be got into on board basically why those policies have been formulated why it's been implemented and also why it's been it's been monitored so that the effectiveness of it can be tracked at every point in time a, a, a presidential candidate or a president once said that you cannot shave a man's head behind behind his back so if it is if it's going to affect me the court see demands that you, you let me know now coming back to the EEL, you know, our, our concern, you know, our concern is born out of three or four basic issues, and which are nationalistic in in perspective. They are not, like I repeat, they are not driven by profit. They are not driven by the need to just um, to just cry the, or, 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 or cry the wolf. They are driven by real issues that not only affect employers, but is also at the core of our national development. And the first one that I mentioned basically for you, for us, is the issue of the, the, the legality, the law behind it. Uh, we believe strongly that the Constitution sets the stage for any kind of activity that we want to do, both as an individual, both as institutions, private institutions, and government institutions. And the Constitution explicitly states that for any levies, taxes, or fees, it has to be legislated upon. It must be through the Act of National Assembly. Mm. And the aim is basically so that no agency, no government, either from state, local, or federal government, can arbitrarily come up with levies or fees or charges. In, in all the context of the handbook and the EEL, we didn't see any legislative backing or any law quoted to say this is the basis for it. Which, um, which is a concern for us, because if we are all committed to building institutions, then we should all be concerned about what is happening in that, in that aspect. Then the second part of it is the issue of ease of doing business. You know, in the last 
one week, about two or three different big brands, big organizations in this country, employing thousands and thousands of Nigerians, have declared losses. Those that couldn't take, take the eat in the last one year, we've lost over 15 or 18 different organizations to different issues. And as those organizations are leaving, all the businesses in the value chain, just take one business for instance, take a, a GSK for instance. When GSK announced they are leaving, for most of us, or for most, most of the uninformed uh, populace, they feel it's only GSK that is be affected. Now, all the businesses supplying GSK products, supplying them inputs, they will also be affected by GSK's living. Their employees will be affected. They are, the household will be affected. So for us, it goes to the core of ease of doing business. Why are we going to charge an average business, a business that has taken the pain to look for expertise? Why will you charge the employee, employer another 15,000, another 10,000? We feel it's at the heart of issue of, of ease of doing business. It's burdensome and it's, it's not necessary at this point in time. The, the, the contradictions also, you know, one of, one of the core, core features of the last administration is contradictions, where the fiscal and monetary policies, they keep contradicting each other, creating problems, not only for local businesses, even for foreign investors. Because when investors cannot predict what is going to happen. When policy somersault has become the order of the day, then it becomes very difficult for you to plan even as a local business. Mm. And we feel strongly that the contradictions in those policies is quite, is quite huge. That needs right. a, a review. Look yeah. at the Presidential Fiscal Monetary Fiscal and Tax Reforms Committee. They were created, either by Taiwo or Udini, they were created to review all the levies, fees, and taxes that is paid across the three the three tiers of government. Now come up with recommendations on how to streamline that. The committee is have just submitted their report to the president a few weeks ago. And now another levy out of the context of what the committee has done come up. And we say look it's it's contradictory. It's 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 it can also negate the the, 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 the plan of this government to uh, to, 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 to successfully marshal these reforms. Right. Because if there are contradictions at this early stage, then what happens in one, two, three years' time? Yeah. And uh, lastly uh, for us is, you cannot, permit me please, you cannot, mm. you cannot spend millions and millions. The president just came from Qatar to seek for investors. You cannot call investors. You cannot go out, seek for investors. We as NECA also, the engineering employers, cannot go out, promote this country get investors to come. Now, on their way here, we're now creating other bottlenecks. Because look, I can't bring $1 billion to this economy, and now you are, you are now giving me conditions on who I should bring to come and manage the $1 billion that I'm bringing. It's, 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 it's not done anywhere. And countries where these are done, there are basic parameters that they put in place. Mm. Those are our basic concerns, and we have expressed it to the appropriate contact, and we believe action is being taken Mm. even as we speak to address those concerns yeah mr smart you, you talk about how this is not uh, done anywhere else but i'll beg to differ that in other climes whether it's in europe or in asia you have to have certain conditions on your work permit i said you, I, I, I said i yeah. said where it's been done right there are frameworks right frameworks that are put in place this is done in singapore this is done in in uk there is a, a semblance of this in uk but we cannot just Pick all those things. We cannot, we cannot, we cannot import them who clan can sink up. Even at the ILO, you know, I'm at the ILO governing body meeting that, that, that started yesterday. Even at the ILO, all their recommendations came comes with a caveat that for countries you can apply this or you can vary it based on your level of development. For right. the UK, UK has not come to Nigeria to come and look for investment. They are not looking for investment. Those places, they are, they are, they are the, 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 they call them the, the seller's market. They own it. You are the one going there. They don't really need you to come. Mm. So they can put conditions and preconditions to your coming. I, but we need them. Mm. We need those investments mm. for national development and for the for growth. So 
You cannot ask them to come and then create bottlenecks, but they are coming. Uh, and I, I think while they are the seller's market, we are the resource market where the resources are here in Nigeria. Uh, the minerals are here. The opportunities are also here. And Nigeria is also a market uh, for some of their products. But, you know, going down to the details of this, the uh, immigration service, which is the lead industry uh, uh, government agency as far as implementing this is concerned, talks about, you know, companies... Uh, need to needing to register their expatriates working with them from now onwards however uh, the effective date of the implementation is set at um, 15th of March and of course uh, the last day of compliance for the EEL is uh, Monday 15th of April this year and it says the EEL card is now mandatory a mandatory document like a passport and will be required at the time of lawful exit and entry into this country it sounds to me like we're trying to take charge we're trying to take control of a system that has uh, gone haywire for quite some time now and this looks like order to me what is the positive if there is any positive from this eel launch in your view despite your criticism of some of uh, its provisions the immigration act the immigration act i can't remember the section explicitly states the conditions and the preconditions for an expatriate to enter this country. They also state explicitly what must be done before a company can employ an expatriate. Let me paraphrase it. He said for every position that the company wants to employ an expatriate, the company must advertise that position and until it is if the company is satisfied until the computer general is satisfied that no nigerian applied or no nigerian is qualified to, to take that position before such positions will be given to the expatriates the local content act local content law that is ap applicable significantly to the oil and gas sector also states explicitly the conditions precedent for a company to bring in an expatriate. And even in, in the oil and gas, it's quite stringent because monitoring is done almost every three months, reviews are done. Then why don't we, why don't we strengthen those current frameworks? What is the guarantee that the new framework will not suffer the same fate that the two that I mentioned will suffer? Let's strengthen those frameworks is our recommendation and then create structures for monitoring. Look. I will not sit here and, and grandstand that there are no new abuses. There are no abuses for some unscrupulous employers. But if the regulatory framework is strong enough, and we are all we all commit to implementing it, all those excesses can be caught. We believe the uh, uh, expatriate expatriate um, employment levy is a duplication of the of the of the Immigration Act. It's a duplication of also the local content and it creates further bodies because with with the immigration act those companies are already paying about between one thousand and two thousand dollars to collect separate cards for for those for those for those expatriates so there is a regulation that is being charged to almost two thousand dollars for separate card another five hundred dollars for for administrative administrative fees and we are bringing another twelve thousand dollars how many companies you know, how many companies can actually afford afford the context of this um, of, of this fee so i view for, for, for a year mr is, smart it doesn't it look driven, like a good it is, deal it is it and won't address those issues hmm. for a year if they have to pay that fifteen thousand, it looks like a good deal to me depending on the productivity of the expatriate fifteen thousand dollars per annum yeah so if if you have 15 expatriates Calculate. Let's 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 do an hypothetical. Let's say we have ten expatriates. You pay one point two, one point five. You pay one hundred and fifty thousand mm. dollars per annum for ten expatriates. If you run a business, if you really run a business, mm. then we all we all appreciate the value. You know, what one hundred and fifty thousand dollars? can do to a business or the damage that one hundred fifty thousand dollars can do to a business i mean few days ago if, few if, days ago yeah. the, for, I, I mean, say this few days ago 
two or three companies. I will not mention their name because of um, so that so that you won't send invoice to us for that. Two or three big businesses, they declared massive losses. You know why? Because of forex. Because when they convert, when they, their, their profits, their operating expenses was converted to, to dollars, and because of the high rate of getting dollars, they, they ran into massive losses in billions. Now, a business that ran into $100 billion, $100 billion uh, loss, or, or let's, let's say $10 billion loss, right. who do you think will be the first casualty? Which business will lose $10 billion in this environment that will not retrench? And the more you retrench, you are creating more dysfunctional issues for yourself. Because unemployment will increase, um, security issues will increase. So rather than deal with the current issue, deal with one issue of enterprise sustainability. Right. And you have dealt with the issue of insecurity, you will have dealt with the issue of revenue for government. Because the employees will pay tax, and the businesses that are sustainable will continue to pay tax. The, the government the government says with its tax reforms and some of the economic reforms it is creating an enabling environment for investors to feel at home and for also uh, investors to feel that they can be able to you know meet their profit margins and so on and so forth but also the government says as far as this eel is concerned its primary goals include fostering the development of the local workforce diminishing the reliance on foreign skills and encouraging companies to prioritize Nigerian citizens in their hiring practices. So if you cannot afford $150,000, guess who you. you're going to employ? Thank, thank you're you going for to reading employ that. Nigerians. You so it's you. a win-win situation either way. <laughs> either you pay thank or you, you hire locally. Thank, thank you for reading that. Thank right. you for coming out with that, with that, with that quote. And, and, I'll, and I'll, I'll take you back to the recent trends. In the last three years, in the last three years, the core of Nigerian experts they've left this country they've moved to canada they've moved to us they've moved to europe even asia to go and get jobs they didn't leave because expatriates were taking their job they didn't leave because there were no job they were leaving because of the macroeconomic issues that has become unbearable for them and they left i repeat the core of nigerian experts from the banking industry to the aviation industry to manufacturing, they've all left. Most of them have left this country because of the macroeconomic issue. So there is no, no bringing in the issue of creating jobs for Nigerians. It doesn't arise. I, I give you. I, a, I, a, I a beg very to differ on that scenario. one. I mean, when we look at you know other developed countries, talking about China, even the USA, UK, they always put their own citizens first. So now that you're saying uh, uh, the, the president's uh, you know, intention on making sure that Nigerian citizens get at least a sizable amount of job opportunities, what would you say is the safest balance you know, for the president? Because one of your reasons also is saying it will affect the foreign direct investment. So how can the government balance you know, uh, ensuring that the, uh, it won't affect uh, the foreign direct investment and at the same time, give Nigerians an equal opportunity to get jobs? We can balance, we can create this balance without imposing additional financial burden on those businesses. That's our concern. We have a structure that works and we cannot continue to burden those that are legally running their business. We have the SEPA card, we have the Immigration Act, we have the, we have the Local Content Act. If those structures, those frameworks are not working, why not let's strengthen those structures? Let's strengthen those institutions so that they, they, are, they will be in a position to carry out their functions as stipulated in the law. The Immigration Act stipulates as explicitly how they should carry out those functions. So why are we not doing that? It also creates structures for monitoring. It also creates structures for evaluating how well those structures, those, those, um, those, those policies have been implemented. Why not create, strengthen those structures to be able to perform their function? Why do we have to create another structure that seeks to burden? You know, we, we, we just must accept that this $12,000 or $15,000 is an additional burden on any business and that's our concern that this is driven All right, Mr. by Smart. The, the, the desire to raise money but not to control and those are the, the core of our concern 
Uh, Mrs. Mark, let's get, let's get this cleared up. Treated. Is the NECA pushing for, you know, uh, the termination of this policy entirely, or are there modifications that you so you want it to be at least put in place? Because earlier you made mention that you made your complaint and then framework uh, are already in place, but they have been considered. So what are those particular framework? Or is NECA just pushing for the entirety, the cancellation of this policy? Well, first I must say we have we have made appropriate representation to, to the appropriate um, appropriate quarters, and those those concerns are currently receiving receiving um, receiving due consideration from the IS quarter. To to first of all, our our, our request is is the suspension of this of this policy first, not only because of the issues that we have as employers, but also because of the economic consequences, not only for employers or for the average nigerians even for government if it is not important then the president will not from day one go out to europe to america asking for investors to come to this country if it's not important if foreign direct investment is not important then it will not it will not have embarked on those many trips and we should also not 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 believe that nigeria is the only country that is the orb of investment for you to know, we have in, in good authority businesses, companies that are leaving this country and setting up businesses around our neighbors. We have businesses moving to Togo, to Bene. Because of the instrumentality of African free, Africa colonial free trade, they can produce anywhere in Africa and bring those goods here to sell. Those are our issues. So our recommendation is this. Let's sit down and strengthen collaboratively strengthen those frameworks the immigration act why is it not working if it's not working yeah. if government feels the local content act is not working why is it not working let's create structures that strengthens those institutions so that they'll be able to control control as they should have the they should control right are we saying are we saying are we saying permit me are we saying that if all companies decides to pay the fifteen thousand dollars and they decide to replace all their nigerian workers with expatriates would that be okay with us if fifteen dollars fifteen thousand dollars is the is the is the the control they are putting in place if all companies in nigeria decide to now bring in expatriates then let's pay the fifteen thousand dollars to immigration you collect the fifteen thousand dollars and we populate all functions with expatriates without without solve the problem we are trying to solve the key issue is this, and, and we must run away from it. This policy creates contradictions even for government. It creates bottleneck for the work of the presidential committee. It we also have the potential to put pressure on the dollars. Imagine all companies here looking for um, trying to mop up dollars so that they can pay for they can pay for pay for the pay for the levy. Are we not putting more pressure on the naira? Okay. So our view is a holistic review of this policy, a suspension first. Hmm and a holistic review of this policy, then a collaborative approach for us to look at why the current legislation of frameworks, why are they not working? And then we come up with what we work, which our association, NECA, playing a very prominent role in the context of monitoring. Okay. Um, so uh, Mr. Smart, we are let's... a responsible organization, and, and, and those, are, those are the things that we have promoted over time. Responsible yeah. enterprises is one of our core, our, our, our core mantra. Okay. Uh, in talking, since we're talking hypotheticals now, uh, one of the issues raised by the government is about finding equilibrium, right? And they also talk about skills transfer. So you can employ two expatriates, for instance, in a particular field or in a particular category. And in your terms of, you know, uh, employment conditions, you can talk about skills training so that they can transfer the knowledge that these Nigerian employees don't have. And after a year or two, you might not necessarily need those extra, uh, expatriates because why? They've already transferred the knowledge and those Nigerian workers who you don't have to pay the $15,000 for because of the employment can now take over and run uh, your company and, and even better, uh, you know, uh, at, at, to even save you cost. However, though, when you talk about businesses moving from here and there, the United States is arguably the biggest and largest economy in the world. We have businesses moving out of the United States, going to Canada, going to China, going to India. Businesses will always move 
to places where they can pay less tax and probably maximize the opportunity. So it's not necessarily just a Nigerian thing. And we have Nigerians working here. We have Americans working in Nigeria. We have Indians working in Nigeria. We have China, Chinese people working in Nigeria. And we have different nationals working in Nigeria. Wherever the opportunity goes, that's where the people would uh, you know, seek employment opportunities at. So it's safe to say that as much as Nigerian professionals are leaving the country in search of greener pastures, we also have people coming into the country to look for some of these job opportunities. Uh, obviously, the government is not trying to, you know, backtrack on this one. What is a workable compromise in your view? Because they're saying it's mandatory. And if you don't do it, the you fine know, is 3.5. The, the 3.5 million you know, it, it, is going is. to be the punishment for, for violators of this one. Um, what is, you, you talked about how you've taken your concern to the appropriate authorities. You're running out of time. We're in March now. By next week, uh, the implementation will kick in. And I suppose employers would have to find a way to scramble to, to comply with this uh, particular uh, uh, new policy. So give me a sense of what your expectations are as far as a compromise is, because I don't think scrapping this is even on the table for the government. You know, it's, 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 um, it's always interesting when we, when, we, when, we, when we make analogies and we say this is happening in America, this is happening in, in Europe, and this is happening in, um, in, in Asia, in China. You know, certain things that those countries can take for granted because of the level of our development, because of the level, the current state that we find ourselves, we cannot, we cannot afford, cannot afford those incidences. It will be, it will be an, an anomaly, you know, for us to accept that, yeah, businesses are leaving other clients, then they should leave our country. Uh, the last, um, the last Bureau of Statistics um, uh, unemployment rate was over with about five points. Which, if, if you use the last parameter that we use, the last parameter before they change to the current parameter, the unemployment rate should be should be eating about forty percent. So, why are we why are we helping to say it is okay for them to leave, or why are we helping to say we don't need foreign direct investment? If those people can they can they can go to places. It doesn't matter. I think it matters and matters a lot. Now, on the issue of compromise, you know, as I've said, we have we have. We have reached out to the appropriate quarters. We have, um, and there are ongoing conversation um, on on ways to arrive at um, at that balance that we all um, we all seek. I mentioned earlier that we will not we will not say there are no abuses. We accept there are abuses here and there, but those abuses can be dealt with without um, without without this this punitive this punitive um, this punitive punitive policy of EEL. But definitely, this government is a listening government. Uh, they've demonstrated over time that they listen. And from the conversation we've had at the back end, we know the government is listening. So in the next few days, I think a lot of things are going to change um, that will focus on moving this country forward. I think the, the core for all of us is, is, is national development um, and, and growth for all of us to but benefit just from in this case, prosperity that they are Mr. Mr. Promises. Smart, just in case, you know, the outcome could favor uh, uh, it could go towards what NECA wants, or it could come towards, you know, uh, in terms of Nigerians' uh, uh, belief, favoring Nigerians. So what if it goes that way, you know, and uh, the government continue with this decision? What would your advice be to business owners? I, I, I will restate my, my earlier comment. I will believe strongly, very strongly, okay. that the government is a listening government. Mm. That conversation is ongoing, and um, in 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 few days' time, you know, uh, we all we all come back to to um, we all come back to um, to the reality of the, the need that enterprise sustainability is one of the key, if one of if not the most important element in in, right. in, in our national development. I said well, that conversation is going on, and we trust that. That, that the needful will be done. Okay. The government is listening and we believe strongly they will do the needful. Okay. Uh, it's safe to say that from the body language of the government, it's a no retreat, no surrender kind of body language. But <laughs> we'll it remains to, to be seen see. what happens in the days to come. Hmm. Mr. Smart uh, Adewale Oyerinde is the direct is the is the director general nigeria employers consultative association neca joining us from geneva switzerland this morning uh to analyze the uh, expatriate employment levy 
that was launched by the Chinubu administration late uh, February this year. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Smart, for joining the conversation. Really appreciate you for taking the time. And, of course, we hope to speak to you soon. Just before I leave, just, just, just before I leave, um, I don't know how many expatriates you have in Trust TV. <laughs> um, I, I, I mean, I think, interestingly, none. That is good. Yeah. That is good. <laughs> but um, finally, for me, if you permit me one minute, you know, and I need to share this for you to understand, you know, one of our local airlines, you know, the MD called and said, in the last three years, they spent $6 million to train six Nigerian pilots. And they came back after working for about a year, almost six of them. They've almost left. Some have left for the US, some have left for Dubai, some have left for for different countries to look for jobs, seeking for jobs. Right. Now I paid six million dollars to train six Nigerians. And because of the mobility of labor, you can't really bond me. The, the six of them decide to leave because of the macroeconomic issue to seek for jobs everywhere. Where does that leave me as, as a business? Six million dollars to train six Nigerians. And because of they needed, they wanted greener pastures, they leave. Then will oh. you now punish me for bringing an expatriate that probably will give me some level of stability or give me some level of, or, or enhance the capacity of my planes to fly? And right. airplanes are not, you know, you, you, don't, you don't get um, rookies to fly airplanes. Right. So how do we deal with that? How do we balance that? What do I tell? The, the owner of that business that have committed that kind of fund to train the same, we Nigerians, our brothers and sisters. And right. you can also also you cannot also blame the Nigerians that have decided to seek okay. greener pastures somewhere else. Right. So how do we deal with that? That is the poster that I will, I will leave with you okay. and probably leave with, leave with our viewers. Okay. Thank you so much, Mr. Smart, uh, here in there for, uh, you know, the analysis. Really appreciate your thoughtful uh, insight on this one. And we hope to speak Thank to you soon. Thank you so much Thank for you. your time this morning. All right.